Welcome to Cloth Weaver 2.0, everyone. This add-on is designed to dramatically speed up your workflow when dealing with cloth. No more having to run through all these different menus and apply clothing modifiers, pinning, adjusting physics. Oh, it's such a pain and it's confusing, right? At least for me it is. <laughs> so, Cloth Weaver can dramatically speed up the process of attaching clothing to your character, whether it be our built-in presets, oh man, or custom clothing. Let's do a quick demo. Let's create a long dress from one of our presets. Now we want to align it to our character. Now, of course, on your model, you'll wanna adjust the vertices and scaling to your character doesn't matter what character you use. It could be a toad or a dog or whatever, really. I mean, as long as the clothing is adjusted to it. So now that we have this aligned, oops, uh, let's, okay. Hit put on clothing. Now, as long as your character has a collision modifier, the cloth will interact with it. Looking good so far. Select your cloth and hit sew clothing. And ho oh, ho ho man, look at that. It smooths, subdivides, applies the physics. Mmm, man. Look at that. Uh oh. There's a little little issue here. You can see there's a little uh, clipping going on. Oh, no problem. Go to the beginning of the scene and just adjust these few vertices. Kind of move it up a little. Uh, where else did we have an issue? Over here on the shoulder, I see. And you can always perfect the topology of your own designs. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's press the play button again. And look at that. Mm, no clipping. At least none that I can see. All right, now let's attach this cloth piece to our model. And hey, Cloth Weaver can help us there too. So now that we have dress long, let's go to our add cloth to rig panel, hit define clothing. So now it says the cloth equals dress long, armature is empty, no problem. Go to your armature. Now this is important. You want your armature to be in object mode. You're gonna select the root armature up here, and then you're gonna hit define armature. Okay. So now it says Aria main, that's the same thing up here. Okay, and another important note, as it says here as well, important. Rig and cloth must be visible when using this button. Blender crashes otherwise, I do not know why. I really don't know why. So now that they're both visible on the same, since we have both layers open, now we're gonna hit add cloth to armature. Let's select the armature real quick and go to our modifiers tab. Or what is it? Yeah. Okay, so as soon as we hit add cloth to armature, okay, so it's added the armature up here and it's moved it to the very top. And we still have the cloth modifier applied, which will greatly help us. Okay, as you can see, simulation's still going. And now if we move our rig, hey, 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 check it out. The cloth follows it. And I personally would keep the cloth here, so that way if you're doing keyframing, you know, and you're animating, that way the cloth still interacts with the model and it doesn't do a whole lot of clipping. It might still do clipping and if it does you can always add a shrink wrap modifier as well. Um, yeah let's go to restore previous real quick and look at that our dress is back to the way it was before we applied it. So that's very useful when troubleshooting. We'll get into that in a bit here. But first I want to mention the towel. Let's align this to the character. Again, if your model, you will have to do a bit of scaling. Um, 
having to you know adjust a lot of that. So with with our towel, we also get a little fiber here, towel fiber. And you can move that to another layer, just something you're not going to be seeing because that is the the fur or the you know the fibers of the towel, the, the cotton or whatever it's made out of. Uh, so once it's aligned to your model, then you're going to do the same thing. Hit put on clothing. Uh-huh. Okay. Select it and then sew clothing. Okay, and I'd imagine you could always, if you want more wrinkles, you could add a, another modifier and sculpt some things in there. That'd look pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our towel to our rig. So define clothing, cloth equals towel, and add cloth to armature. Oops, some kind of error. Well, let's just try again. Select the cloth, add cloth to armature. Hey, it works this time. Sometimes you gotta just try things multiple times and see if they work. In this case, it did. So now, let's fix our towel fibers. Click that button down here. And let's, let's view them. So this is kinda what they'll look like. But of course, it'll, it'll multiply and add a bunch more when you render. An important note on rendering, however, you will encounter that items that are hidden will appear in your render. So for example, whenever you click put on clothing, it will back up your model. And that's when the restore feature comes in. You hit restore and this previous version is actually just hidden. So if you render, it will show this. So go ahead and move your backup to another layer or just delete it. And now when you render a little section of it, it won't be there. So this is what the towel kind of looks like. Little fluffy fibers there. Yeah. Faster rendering than using particle hairs. Moving right along, let's create some custom clothing. Create base plane. This will create a plane that has all the mirroring and the modifiers and vertex group set up already. I don't have a skirt preset, so let's make one of those. Kind of create the outline. Depending on the clothing that you're making, you'll want to be aware of topology. For something simple like this, we can just subdivide it multiple times. Five and six are about enough. If you go any more than that, it'll take it'll bog the simulation down. And you're not gonna have a good time. <laughs> Shift duplicate and put it on the other side. Uh, control N to flip your normals, keep these ones this way, and the back ones facing that way. Alright. Let's add our seams in. Mm, hang on. Okay, uh, hit the F key multiple times. Go ahead and delete these faces, only the faces. Select your pins group and go to edge mode. Hang on here. Okay, so that'll be the pins and you're gonna select odd, just one after another sign and then do the evens. Let's uh, move this to another layer because my rig is in the way. Okay. Even. Now let's do the, hang on. Okay, so those are our odd. Now our even will be these ones, the opposite sign. And another important note, you want to select odd, the top group or just the top group up here. Now, let's see how it looks. Hit put on clothing. Eh. Let's sew it. 
Uh oh. What happened there? Ah, cloth shrinks to one vertice. Well, that is because... This is where Restore comes in handy. Restore Previous, there it is. In Edit Mode, you want to be in Vertex Selection before you do any kind of putting on the clothing or the sewing. So, again, put on the clothing. This is a good learning moment. So clothing. Hey, it works that time. So once you are satisfied with your cloth, let's add some materials. Cloth Weaver has a nice shader built in called Cloth Polyester Pattern and Cloth Polyester Custom. Let's divvy up our workspace. Let's add node editor and the image. All right, so here's our here's one of our textures or one of our uh, patterns. Sorry, there's a difference here. Currently, it looks currently the material assigned cotton, yeah, cloth, cotton slash polyester. And it currently looks like this with the current pattern. There will be future patterns. There will be more patterns available in the future updates. So currently, we have our pattern. Let's add the circle. OK. Let's find it here. Now, this, this eyeball and all this other stuff, that's from my 3D characters. So you're not going to have that in the add-on. Sorry. <laughs> OK, let's click into edit mode over here. Actually, what we can do, let's hit reset UVs. And then add some seams. Let's add it on the side. Mark seam and then do it on this side. Okay. Now edit, select all, unwrap again, reset UVs. Okay, now we're got now we got this layout. So we're gonna select these and scale them. But nothing is happening. Why is this? I'll tell you why. Go to your data tab and your UV maps. So you can see the pattern is running into pattern. And currently, we are selected bump. So we are actually adjusting the bump, which is not good. So select pattern. And again, reset UVs. Now select them all. And we can scale it. Let's go back to our plaid pattern. OK. Now this is just for a, a demo. But you can always adjust the seams as necessary. OK. Let's adjust the bump. So select bump down here and go to, let's find our, where is it at? Cloth bump. And let's zoom in so we can see this. So you can see that texture there. Now you can also add in your own patterns and bumps as well. So here on the side, we can also adjust the color. Ah, oh, isn't that cool? Uh, Non-color data, this is, again, it's just a black and white image for the pattern. Same for the bump. Um, oh, that looks terrible, doesn't it? Ah, I kind of like that. That's that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Let's see what else. What other features do we got over here? Let's let's make this a little bigger so we can see. Um, let's see, bump texture. 
That is how deep the bump is. So right now you can see it's very, you can really see the lines in the bump there. And here they're non-existent. Polyester mix kind of creates the, uh, turning it down creates more of a cotton, I, I would think so. And then turning it up all the way creates more of a silk or a, like a polyester, you know, more of a shiny material. Or, well, not shiny, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's keep it around three, I'd say. It's kind of my, my average defaults. Uh, let's see, Fresnel. Fresnel, yes. Uh, that would be extremely glossy. And this, it kind of has how the light wraps around the object. Glossy, rough. How shiny is the material? Let's say, for example, your clothing got really wet. You're a, it's a rainy day. It's going to be a little more shiny. Yeah, that's when that would be useful. Or if you're doing leather or whatever it might be. But for the default, I kind of like to put this at, what was it, around 0.15, I think I had it. And then the glossy is around 2, because I think that's around um, about how it would look. Then again, I always like rim lighting as well. Makes it pop off the page, right? So now, what is this custom one down here? Well, you can see this takes a pattern, the top one, and the bottom one does not. It just takes a straight color. So let's say if you had a uh, some kind of, say you had an image over here and you want to run that through, then that'll apply to the entire model. But if you want to do a pattern, then you can use this one. To install Cloth Weaver, open Blender, navigate to File and User Preferences, then hit Install Add-on from File. Navigate to the folder where you downloaded Cloth Weaver. Downloads clothweaver.zip and install add-on. Now you will see it here in the Preferences panel. Check the box to enable it, and go ahead and save your user settings. Now you will notice in the 3D viewport on the side, on the tools panel, you'll notice the Cloth Weaver add-on has been installed. I believe I covered everything I needed to in that video. Thanks again for watching, and I'd like to give a huge, tremendous shout out to those who have already downloaded Cloth Weaver and for making this new update possible. 